Um, what you see here, and perhaps not with quite as much visual detail as we would have hoped, is the American Express red credit card. And I'm going to talk to you today about a credit card, which is probably not something that you're used to as the start of a presentation in international development studies. <laughs> but if you read the advertisement for this credit card, the American Express red card, the one that you see, you'll find they say, and I quote them directly, you can feel great about spending, whether you are buying cappuccinos or cashmere. American Express asked an audience like you to consider what I think is one of the most perverse outcomes of the global HIV AIDS pandemic. They ask, and I quote, has there ever been a better time to shop? <laughs> What I'd like to talk to you about is a collaborative book project on a book that will be coming out in the beginning of the year from the University of Minnesota. And the book is called Brand Day, Shopping Well to Save the World, just like the title. This is the table of contents of the book. You can see, I hope that it's a relatively concise book, but we hope we'll chart this phenomenon which we're very interested in studying and hope that maybe some of you would also take up some interest in that we call Brand Aid. My co-author is Stefano Ponte. And his previous work has been on the role of Africa in the global economy and on issues of sustainability. You may know he did a book called The Coffee Paradox, looking a lot at ethical trade issues and farming in Africa. My own other work has actually been on the politics of access to antiretroviral treatment, uh, particularly looking at a comparative case study in Uganda and South Africa. And so I was very happy to be here talking about that side of my work today. But I actually see this work as very intimately linked. And one reason to be absolutely candid with you is that when Product Red was announced, which is the study of our book, I had just returned from doing six months of field work in an AIDS treatment clinic in South Africa. And so in many ways, for both of us as authors and scholars, the book comes from a critical theory perspective, but also from a, of a position of moral dissatisfaction. Just for any of you who might not know the Red products, here's an introduction. Um, the bracelet that you see here was launched by Giorgio Armani's friend, Julia Roberts, the American actress, and was launched in the United States two years ago in December for World AIDS Day to help fight AIDS in Africa. 40% of the gross profit margin of these import Armani bracelets actually goes to support the Global Fund to, buy, to Fight HIV, AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. In our book, we argue that consumption, trade, and aid wed dying Africans with designer goods. What you see here is another red product. It's the red cashmere bikini. Um, <coughs> product red was launched by Bono at the World Economic Forum in, in 2006 in Davos. And red was launched explicitly to raise awareness and money for the Global Fund. Under the initiative, iconic brands such as Apple, uh, Converse, The Gap, Armani, now Starbucks and Hallmark, have teamed up to produce red branded products and to encourage customers to do good by dressing well. The advent of what we call brand aid explicitly links African development assistance to commerce and not to philanthropy or to traditional forms of aid. A percentage of the profits of all of the red products goes directly to the global fund. I have a very brief video I'd like to show you. I hope that you can hear. I'll try to be very quiet. This is the Giorgio Armani red launch of the red products. by being here, each and every single one of us can participate in changing the world. This is a treatable disease. It takes two pills a day that cost 30p. Just two pills. Take them at breakfast and at dinner. So why every day do we see the deaths of six and a half thousand Africans for lack of drugs that we can find in any corner chemist. The red pill makes you larger. Just say yes. You buy a red product over here, the red company buys life-saving drugs for someone who can't afford them over there. That's it. So why not shop till it stops? Why not 
try some off the rack enlightenment we can spend and destroy. we can wear our inside out you will be a good looking samaritan because and this is very good news for some of us sinners make the best saints that's right and one last confession one last confession it's true rock stars want to have fun and change the world but i can't change the world i can't you can't but we can and we will so this co-branded initiative in which you can be a good-looking samaritan started in 2006 as i mentioned and it goes to support the Global Fund. Now, some of you, perhaps many of you, already know about the Global Fund and the work that it does. <laughs> For anyone who's not familiar with it, the Global Fund is an independent private foundation governed by an international <coughs> board. And it's interesting because it works in partnership with governments, but it's strictly a funding, a regranting institution, not an implementing agency. RED itself is a kind of cause-related marketing, where sales are linked directly to donations to the fund. So far, the red grants have been made through the fund's standard disbursement processes and have gone explicitly to the fund's best performing programs for AIDS in Africa, right? Proceeding, uh, pr producing a certain kind of selection bias, of course. The countries that had benefited from the red funds were initially Rwanda, Lesotho, now Ghana, Swaziland, and most recently Zambia and South Africa have been added. So far, the global fund has gotten about 150 million US dollars from the Red Initiative. This is only around 1% of all the funds which have been given to the Global Fund since its start, but it is the second largest source of private funding after, want to guess? Bill Gates. Bill Gates, absolutely. So you go from Gates to Red, which is a really interesting comparison about what these new initiatives are, I think. Um, on one hand, of course, it's only a drop in the bucket because the Global Fund receives about 95% of its funding from traditional sources. But on the other hand, it's a very important source of funding and one which the Global Fund has been relying on more and more, and they're certainly talking much more about trying to increase initiatives like Product Red um, as some of the, of the public interest in funding the Global Fund appears to be waning. Now, in our book, we take a dual approach arguing that red has both symbolic and material effects, and particular consequences for its target group, which are explicitly women and children with AIDS in Africa. For example, what you see here is the popular magazine Vanity Fair. This may not be as familiar to all of you, but Vanity Fair is a sort of middle brow magazine which promotes the chasing of cool. Uh, in 2007, Bono guest edited a special issue of the magazine Vanity Fair, the purpose of which was stated explicitly to rebrand Africa. The Africa issue, as it came to be known, is one of the red products which seeks to bring Africa to the minds of the idle rich, thus providing an opportunity for them to help. Of course, as most of you already know, given the legacy of slavery, colonialism, the history of extraction of resources, and the supply of armaments to the continent, it's rather difficult to imagine a time when the rich have not been interested in Africa. Yet this magazine featured 22 different covers photographed by the world-famous photographer Annie Leibovitz, who engaged in a game of what they called visual telephone. And each of these cover makers were people who, were people who had done something for Africa. So you see the current US President Obama. Um, previously, I had on my slide the former US President George Bush, who was also on one of the covers. So Africa, where I've actually been conducting over a decade of mostly what I call anthropolitical field work, on health and AIDS, working in East Africa and South Africa, um, really drove my work to look on this project to investigate what is this happening, this rebranding of Africa. Now, I'm willing to acknowledge in an audience like this one of development experts that it would be very